From Charlotte, North Carolina, it's Making Light of It with Darren Stock. Tonight's special guest, Bonnie Jones. Featuring Steve Swanson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's Darren Star. Welcome, everyone, to the show that critics throughout the Middle East are saying is absolutely extraordinary. Well, at least we think that's what they're saying. Ladies and gentlemen, it's making light of it. Come on. This is the show where we are endeavoring to see people's shaka restored to their bombas, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> making light of it, and I am not alone. No, I am not alone. My one-man band, the one, the only, Steven Swanson, everybody, come on. <laughs> Steve, how, how, how are you? I'm shaka and I'm bomba. Come on, shaka bomba, right? Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Well, listen. Uh, this is actually kind of fun. In Wyoming, a new world record has been set for the world's longest beard chain. Steve, have you heard about this? The world's longest beard chain. No, I haven't. Yeah, the world's longest beard chain. Apparently, participants gathered at a bar and they stood side by side and they clipped together their beards to create this hairy chain that was measured 150 feet long. Oh. Crazy, man. Many of the participants said at first they weren't sure about growing a long beard, but then it grew on them. Hey! <laughs> you could say this group of guys went to great lengths to beat the record. <laughs> yep, I guess they knew that the competition for the record would be Neck and neck. <laughs> <laughs> if these men look familiar to you, they should. This is actually the cast of Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean. And when they aren't filming pirate movies and tying their beards together, this is actually the facilities maintenance team from Elevation Church. <laughs> That bit's actually probably gonna bring a lot of church growth to elevation. Everyone's gonna wanna meet, you know, these, these guys. Where's the pirates? Where's the pirates? Where are the pirates here? That's what we're doing here. We're helping, you know, mega churches get That's... more more mega, yes. you know? You're welcome. You're welcome, Stephen. Here, okay, well, here's a segment that we are launching today, and we call it Five Things You Don't Want to Hear While Receiving a Prophetic Word. Five things you don't want to hear when receiving a prophetic word. Number five, I really, I really sense like you're going to be entering into a Job season. <laughs> That's one thing you don't want to hear, right? I don't want to hear that. All right, here's another one. Number four, you should probably sit down for this one. <laughs> No, we don't want to hear that either. Have you ever gotten a word like that? You, be, you, better, you better sit down. All right, number three. I keep hearing Amway. <laughs> we should talk. Oh, yeah. Pyramid. We come over for dinner, yeah? Number two, and you definitely, you definitely don't want to hear this one. Okay. I keep seeing the words Portland, Oregon written over your head. <laughs> What's wrong? I'm, Steve, Steve, I keep seeing the words Portland, Oregon over your head. I'm from Portland, Oregon. <laughs> Thank you, Darren. That, that explains everything. Yes, it really does. 
<laughs> oh my goodness, come on. And number one. Okay, so like, I don't really know what this means, but I keep seeing a lawnmower without any gas, a broken cup, and a bridge that's being burned down. Does that resonate with you? <laughs> I, I love it. I love it when, you, when, when somebody says after a completely crazy word, does that resonate with does you? Does it resonate with you? Yeah, does that resonate? Like, no. <laughs> My lawnmower is full of gas. Thank you. Nobody, nobody ever says no with her. Yeah, no, 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 no. You just, you just kind of awkwardly smile. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Listen, we've all had words spoken over our lives, but right now, I declare over you right now, your lawnmower has gas, <laughs> your cup has no cracks, and your bridge is being rebuilt, says the Lord, come on. Listen, in all seriousness, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans not to harm you, but plans to give you a future and a hope. We declare right here, right now, the joy of King Jesus over you. We've got a great show for you. In fact, Bonnie Jones is in the house. Listen, this show is about to get lit. Right here, right now. Let's make a night of it. Let's go. We are interrupting this holy and life-changing program to take a quick second to promote ourselves. <laughs> Hi, my name is Darren Stott. When I'm not casting demons out of hostile Antifa soldiers or being fried like a grilled cheese sandwich by extreme leftist reporters, I'm using my time to dismantle defeat and depression and catalyze joy in the hearts of believers. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and other socialist media apps at The Darren Stott. And get our free 45-minute teaching on portals at heavenlyportals.com. Welcome back, everybody. We're super excited and honored because our guest today moves in a seer prophetic gifting as well as healings and miracles. It's her passion to see women set free from the fear of man to step into their gifting and calling. She was married to the late prophet Bob Jones. I'm talking about the one, the only, the beautiful Bonnie Jones. Come on, Bonnie. Good to see you. Uh, good to see you, Blessings, dear. Blessings. Thank Please you. Sit, Thank sit you. Down. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's awesome to be here. Oh my goodness. What do you think about all this? Make it I light think of it. it's beautiful. And you know what? What's you that? said about the seer anointing. Yeah. You know what I see for you? What's that? That you're going to be making light of many things. Oh, thank you. And the I body of it. Christ needs that. They sure do. You know, things can get kind of, things can get actually kind of dark even within the church, can it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we're doing our best, Bonnie. We're doing our best. And here we are, 2023. It's a new year. God's doing a new thing. Yep. And he's released a new word to you right. about women stepping into the fullness of what God has for them in the kingdom and on the earth. Right. Yeah, you know, I had this awesome experience uh, back in December of 2021. Okay. And in that experience, I was repositioned and recommissioned. Wow. Because, you know, I've been carrying on the legacy, Bob's legacy of Did You Learn to Love? And, and really that is so important for people to know how to love. Wow. You know, and to really walk in the love of Jesus. But the Lord has called me to different things and not just carry on that legacy, but my own anointing. Wow, wow. And what he's done, I'm like, Lord, do you not realize I'm like not a spring chicken anymore? <laughs> you know, but age is just a number. Yes. And he said he's, you know, renewing my youth. I like that. Yeah, okay. come on, come But you on. know, he's really called me to raise up the army of the Lord, the women who are gonna come forth bringing the gospel. And, you know, it's not just the women, it's the body of Christ. He said that he's coming to lift the veil off the face of the bride because he wants that face-to-face -face intimacy with her, just like Moses. You know, Moses did not wear a veil except when he was in front of the people, wow, right? right? But it was that face-to-face -face communication and that's what he wants. And Unfortunately, we have put many veils on our face. Wow. You know, doubt, unbelief, fear of man. That's a biggie. Wow. We need to have the reverential fear and awe of God 
and not fear man. Yeah. So, so that's fascinating. Uh, for, for a while there, the Lord called you alongside of Bob Jones right. to really serve the calling, the gifting mm -hmm. on, on his life. You guys really led in a beautiful way, side by side. In fact, I know uh, Bobby Connor says that because of you, the Lord added many years uh, right. to Bob's life. Bob went home to glory on Valentine's Day, which right. was so prophetic and I significant. Know. And then you went from this place of being really serving the vision and the call of Bob really into coming into your own unique identity and destiny. Right. And with that has come this word of empowerment, mm -hmm. uh, not just for women, but for the bride of Christ, which right. we're all included in. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the Lord has said that his bride, like I said, it's not just women. He said it'll be mostly women to begin, but men are going to see the anointing and they're going to join in. Wow. wow. And, um, but it's, they're coming forth in power and he's going to multiply the work that they do. He wants himself glorified. It's the glory, Christ in me, the hope of glory. It's what resides in us is going to flow forth from us. Wow. So it's the glory of the Lord, so he is glorified. So good, so good. And, and then the Lord spoke to you recently about the Daughters of the Dawn. Right, absolutely. Yeah, and he said that's a movement. He said there's been a movement of women in the past, uh, several, that, but they've lost their passion. They kind of lost their light. And he said now is the time, you know, for this to bring forth and to shine forth. You know, she's, his bride is coming out of the wilderness you know, and that, that brightness is going to shine upon her. I love that personally, because it seems like for a long time in the church, we've been kind of stuck on models. And so right. it's like, if we see a model that's working somewhere, you know, we try to duplicate that model. Right. It always makes, I always crack up when I think about the early nineties, mm -hmm. you know, when Saddleback was really becoming this big thing. And, yeah. um, and Pastor Rick Warren, you know, being in California would wear, you know, Hawaiian shirts with, <laughs> yeah. you know, with his shorts and it worked. But then all yeah. of a sudden you had pastors in Alaska um, yeah. that were trying to steal his model. So you're in the frozen north with the frozen chosen <laughs> and you've got yeah. ministers on with their with their Hawaiian shirts and their shorts and they're like, hey, if it works for them, it'll work for I us. Know, you know? I know. And it seems like what's happening um, uh, uh, as of late that we're going from this place of having to do like models to the Lord activating and catalyzing movements. And that's right. why I'm really excited about this Daughters of the Dawn and a movement of right. passionate women who are carrying the glory of the Lord and bringing reform to the greater body of Christ. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of, and I'm gonna say especially women mm -hmm. who have been in hiddenness. Yes. And, and I would say even for myself, you know, the Lord, even though I was out and doing, the Lord really had me in a place of preparation. Wow. And hiddenness so that, um, you know, when he says it's time to go, we will emerge full of power, full of might, you know, and, and take the kingdom. So there's actually, sometimes the hiddenness can be a gift. Absolutely. Because it's an opportunity for preparation. Right. But what you're kind of telling people is, take preparation seriously because the Lord is about to bring you out of the hiding place. Yeah, you're about to come out of the wilderness, yes. Leaning on your beloved. Isn't that the great thing? So, yeah. Yeah. That is so much fun. It and is. Monty, speaking of fun, I wanted to do something that's a little bit different today. Okay. I thought we'd do a, a, a game uh -huh. called the Whisper Challenge. Okay. Okay, so here's, here's how it works. Um, I'm gonna give you these noise-canceling headphones, and I'm gonna play um, uh, the sounds of the ocean, okay, through these headphones. <laughs> so go, go and take those there. Okay. And then I am going to whisper a word. And I want you to guess, uh, it's a phrase, I want you to guess the phrase that I'm saying. Okay. Is that good? Mm -hmm. You guys ready for the whisper challenge? Shh. Okay, she can't hear me, it works. She's looking at me like, what, what's he saying? Okay, the first phrase, here we go. The first phrase. Stir up the hornet's nest. <laughs> Stir up the hornet's nest. The glory of the Lord is coming. <laughs> is that what you said? No, that's not what it said at all. 
<laughs> We're gonna do the next one. Are you ready for are you ready for the next one? Okay, here we go. And can you guys hear me okay? What I said? Yeah. Right, here's the next one. Bite off more than you can chew. Elephants wear pantyhose? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly what I said. You're, you're amazing. You're amazing. Are, are you ready for the next one? Sure. <clears throat> Head over heels. Elephants like peanuts? <laughs> I said head over heels. Oh. Head over heels. Ladies and gentlemen, more with Bonnie Jones. We will be right back. Stay tuned. Let's go. Did you know that a third of your life is going to be spent in bed? No, I'm not the My Pillow guy. I was discipled by him. It's me, the My Dreams guy, and the inventor of the dreamscourse.com. Do you feel tired and drained most of the time? Detached? Feeling alone in the world? Listen, I have created my very first dream school that will take you from being a victim of the night to being victorious! But wait, if you go to thedreamscourse.com and you use the code ISN30, that's a $300 value for not $99, not $89, not even $79! You will get lifetime access to your dream community and videos for only $69.99. Whoa! But you can't delay. You have to enroll today. TheDreamsCourse.com And we are back with Bonnie Jones. Bonnie, thanks so much again for, for joining us. Each year, the Lord speaks to you about what He's going to be doing and unfolding throughout the year. Right. And the Lord has been speaking to you about this year, about 2023. Right. Would you be willing to share with us some of the things that's on God's heart for this sure. year? Sure. Well, you know, a lot of what the Lord's been showing me is, um, well, one, is women rising to their call and coming forward uh, and men embracing them. Come on. How about that? See? So, yeah, uh, actually, you know, he's had me start the Daughters of the Dawn. Yes. And it's not just women, but it's the body of Christ because he's coming to lift the veil off of the bride of Christ. And there's many veils that the bride has put on and she doesn't deserve them. Wow. You know, and I'm not talking just about women. I'm talking about the bride. Wow. So, um, and something that the Lord has really said, it's the um, lesser known prophets, it's the words of the lesser known prophets, the minor prophets that are really going to come forth now. There's so many that have been, um, you know, we look at the major prophets and we look more at the New Testament, I believe, but the words of like Joel and Hosea oh, and um, Habakkuk, that to me is a real key there. Remember, Habakkuk, he went to the Lord. He took his petition to the Lord. And then he said, now I will wait to see what he will answer me. And that's really key, you know, waiting to see what the Lord is going to answer. And then when he does, then we deliver that word, you know. So we're announcing the word of the Lord. So those things, the minor prophets, the words of the minor prophets, you know, Joel and Malachi and uh, even... Um, uh, Haggai, those are going to be really, and, and Nahum, there's just so many, so many key words in each one of them, and they're going to come forth this year. So it's going to be very important Yeah, we are um, cultivating and stewarding right. um, Absolutely. These, these, these scriptures and these prophecies, Right. so we really need to be in the Word this year. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, you know, like I said, the veil's being lifted. What the Lord showed me is that He wants to lift that veil so he can have face-to-face -face encounters with his bride. Wow. You know, like he did with Moses. Remember the children of Israel, they're like, it's okay, you go do, and, and we'll just sit here and we'll wait. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But he's the one that had the encounters, and he has called all of us to come up to the mountain of God. You know, that's where we need to be, up there with him, face-to-face, -face, and have those encounters. Money, I, I wanted to ask you about that, because, um, uh, 
you said he wants all of us right. to come up the mountain mm -hmm. to encounter him. Right. And, um, and so can you talk to us about the importance of not just prophets hearing the voice of the Lord this year, but the importance of all of us hearing the voice of God for ourselves. Right. Well, you know, we have to hear the voice of the Lord in order to have our salvation. You know, I mean, at some point we were all, say, a heathen, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. we came to know the Lord by that still small voice. So it is vital that all of us hear the voice of God for direction, mm. for our own life, you know, for our families, depending on where you are, if you know, like you're a minister or if you're a, uh, a governmental leader, no matter where it is, you need direction. And, um, you know, years ago, Bob and I was traveling, we saw this big billboard, and all it was was a giant ear. Okay, it, but it said, first we hear, then we listen. Wow. And I thought, how profound that is, because first we do, we hear a sound, but what is that sound? It's the alarm clock, then we listen to it, right? And it's, it's for an action. Well, when we hear God, he, we hear him because he wants to speak to us for us to do something hearing and obey. And that's where children of Israel did not want to do. You know, they had, they wanted to follow the dictates of their own heart. And oftentimes we do the same thing. You know, I'd rather do it my way, right? Yeah, totally, yeah. Totally, oh totally. yeah, I've got my idea. Me and Frank Sinatra, we're gonna do it my <laughs> yes, way. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, we're keeping it light and doing it my way. Yes. Yeah, but we need to hear God. And then, you know, it prevents you from, you know, perhaps bankruptcy. <laughs> an accident, you know, getting in the ditch somewhere. You know, one time, many years ago, the Lord took me in this experience and he showed me the rest of my life. Okay, wow. I know, it was an extraordinary experience. And then he, like I was back in my bed and the only thing, it was so powerful, the only thing I could move was my eyeballs. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I, I couldn't even move my head. And I said, Lord, what is this? what is this? And he said, this is what it would be like if I removed my presence. But he said, what he did, he showed me the, the rest of my life. And this was probably a good five, six years before I met Bob. Oh my goodness, wow. But he said, I showed you the rest of your life so that when you live it, you won't fall into the pitfalls. Wow. You'll know what to avoid. That, that was so, so, so good. And uh, one of the ways that God speaks to you is through dreams. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of, you have a lot of dreams. I do. And ha have you been a dreamer your whole life or yes. has this been, really? I did, yeah. Yeah. Ever since I was a kid, a little kid. And, uh, and, and how, how important have dreams been in your life? Like how has God used dreams um, in, in, in your life? Well, I'd say for direction, you know, uh, instruction, direction, correction, you know, um, what he has done in say probably the last eight, 10 years was more directional for, for the body of Christ, okay? Um, a lot of personal prophecy, and, um, but I would say directional for the body of Christ. A lot of times it's just to pray. Mm. You know, sometimes the Lord will show me something and and I think I need to act on it. And he'll say, no, this is just for your information to pray. I was wondering, would you be willing to pray for our audience today? And would you be willing to pray that that dream realm would open mm -hmm. and that by God's grace, that, that this would be a way that God would begin speaking to people for clarity, direction, discernment. Would that be okay? Absolutely. That'd be awesome, Bonnie. Father, I just, I just ask for everyone viewing today that their heart would be turned tender to the Lord, that their mind would be open to receive the revelation. And I pray, Father God, open up that dream realm for everyone. Lord, their minds are not closed. I would just pull back that veil of deception that says our mind is closed that we cannot receive. Father, you have never stopped speaking and you are full of revelation and you are full of love and compassion. Father, I just ask that everyone that would be seeing or hearing today, that they would receive that gracious gift of that 
impartation realm of the prophetic, of the revelation realm, to dream, to have visions, and to experience the joy in that realm, mm. in Jesus' name, the healing that comes from that, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Donna, you are a delight. Thank you so much for being a part of our show oh. today. Let's do it again, would that be good? Absolutely, I just commend you for stepping out in faith. Faith is a big word this year. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Thank Ladies you. and gentlemen, Bonnie Jones, come on. God bless you, Bonnie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bonnie Jones. Steve, Bonnie, Bonnie is special. She's very special. Man, and that was a special show. What a beautiful lady. In fact, I'd say that that was our most special show we have ever done. Specialist, the specialist. Yes. Now, as you can tell, we're just about out of time, but I don't want for you to be sad. Did you know in the kingdom there's no goodbyes? <laughs> It's true. There's only highs, and I'll see you soon. This has been an amazing show. I hope that you agree. Thank you for joining us. You mean so much to me. It fills my heart with joy to call you friend makes me so happy to know we'll be together again in the kingdom there's no goodbyes in the kingdom there's only highs in the kingdom there's no In the kingdom, there's only highs. In the kingdom, there's no goodbyes. In the kingdom, there's only highs. In the kingdom, there's no goodbyes. No, there's not. In the kingdom. And I'll see you soon. Hmm. Where's that portal? Where is that silly thing? Portal? Portal? <laughs> well, there it is. See you soon. Woohoo!